So I asked you guys a while ago in a poll I made who should win round 8 and I believe I gave you 3 options there. It was the gods, humanity, or either side and I remember I specifically made sure to not confuse the question with who do you think is going to win round 8. And it's very important you understand this because these are two entirely different questions. Both of which I could reasonably give you 2 different answers to actually but I was surprised to see so many vote for the gods. I think it might have been around 60 to 70% of you guys who said yes the gods should take the next round and when it comes to the overall score i never really care too much about it right of course it is a meaningful part of the story it's only gonna be more important as we get further into the later rounds but the fights themselves have always been way more important to me but apparently most of you don't see it the way i do because i personally would have voted for the third option i think either side should win and that would be completely fine with me again this is about whichever side should win not really who i think is going to win because realistically i do believe the gods are going to win next but if it somehow goes to humanity i just wouldn't see any issue with that and this is where it starts to get a little complicated because we don't even know who the round eight fighters are yet right and it's very important that you consider this because if you look back to the last seven rounds round six and seven are the only two that have really brought something new to the story because round seven had introduced hades an entirely new fighter but round six completely removed bisham one for zero another new character but we also saw buddha switch sides so round Rounds 1 through 5 have been the only ones with both characters from the original roster. So it then begs the question now, what are the chances we see a whole new fighter step in and fight for round 8? Because on the off chance that really happens, I don't think it's as easy to predict anymore as it was when we just assumed it was gonna be any two fighters from the roster we currently have. For example, this is one of the reasons I couldn't see Buddha losing to Hajin in round 6 because it just didn't feel like there was any true purpose for Hajin as a future character, so it eventually changed changed my mind mid fight on the gods going forward to two if it meant sacrificing Buddha, a character who already had so much build up as a future character to the rest of the story. I mean we're even seeing it now in chapter 65 with Buddha asking Kentoki to look into this character called Siegfried so my assumption was only proven right and mind you, this is before the start to round 8 so who knows how else Buddha will affect the plot by round 9 or round 10. And I realize I'm going off topic here but the bigger point I'm trying to get across to you is just what separates the first 5 rounds from 6 and 7 because I'll admit despite round 7 being my favorite round so far, it always felt kind of predictable to me and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think the journey from point A to B is what's more meaningful but the fun I get as a fight fan, the reason that gets me hyped about Ragnarok was not only never knowing who could win but the actual feeling of not knowing. And I'm specifically talking about round 6 and 7 because round 8 is obviously what comes next so we're now in a situation where we have to consider is this going to be a trend where we see a new fighter step in for the next one or two rounds. So again, round 7 is my favorite fight, I have little to no complaints about it, but it's always the fact that I felt I knew who was already going to win that drowned out some of the fun for me, and that's really just a personal problem, right? But it does serve to prove the bigger picture that I'm trying to paint for you, which is what separates round 6 and 7 from the rest, where whoever should have won these two rounds could have been affected by the fact we saw three completely new fighters, let alone Buddha's whole traitor plot, so again, Again, it begs the question, what if we get a completely new fighter step in for round 8 just like we saw happen in 6 and 7? Because it seems to me that with every new fighter we've been getting, whether it was Hades, Zero, or Hajin, it ultimately changed the motive for who should win the round I think. In other words, just because we're thinking the gods should win round 8 today, it doesn't then mean we're gonna be saying this again in the next 2 or 3 months. Just to give you an example, let's just say in some alternative universe we end up seeing Loki versus King Leonidas, and for argument's sake, would you then then still be saying Loki should win just because of the score? Do you see where I'm going with this? Of course I'm asking you this hypothetically and who knows maybe you're already so far ahead of me predicting King Leonidas would lose against anybody no matter what but I do want to put it in the back of your minds just how important round 8 is going to have to be right? And ever since round 3 I feel like every fight's given us a reason to call it the most important fight yet. This is part of what makes every fight so meaningful but ever since round 3 I feel like things have only kept getting more and more intense. And don't get me wrong, the first two rounds are diamonds in my opinion, I don't mean to take anything away from them, but it's ever since humanity got the first victory that the story's gotten so much more value I think. Because it starts with humanity getting their first win after the god of gods Poseidon fell, and then we got round 4, arguably the most loved fight in the series next to Adam and Zeus, and then we got to round 5, the first draw breaking match against a chief god, and then we saw Buddha go traitor, then finally we're here, humanity in the lead, so it's like you have no choice 
choice but to expect the unexpected. And honestly, this would have to be the number one reason why I don't automatically think the gods should absolutely win round 8. It would actually be kind of surprising if we saw something more normal like Loki versus Okita or Beelzebub versus Nostradamus, I think. Because think about it, nobody could have predicted the 7 lucky gods turning into 0 or Hades straight up volunteering himself to fight in round 7, so there has to be something to round 8 that makes it stand out, whether that means we see a new fighter or not. However, like I said at the beginning of the video, I think you could reasonably still make an argument for believing the gods take the next round. Even I have to admit that's probably what's gonna happen regardless of if I feel either side could take it. But if the fighters are characters who I can see having the potential for a more important role later on in the story or not, then I think that's what's gonna matter more than the score because I don't think the tournament is all there is to the story. And this is why even though round 4 isn't my favorite fight, I can't appreciate its time in the story because it was really unclear who would win with the gods 2-1. to one. I think in retrospect, round 4 would have to be the hardest fight to have called yet. But I think this is where I'm gonna end the video guys, thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to offer some discussion while we wait until the next chapter for this month, so please feel free to let me know in the comments what you think, anything you agreed or disagreed with. But before I end the video, I just want to give a very special thanks to the channel's patrons, Iron, Justin, and Nick's EXP. Thank you so much for your support, and for anyone wondering, I just recently opened up a Patreon where if you're interested, you can sign up too and get into this monthly q and I'll be doing now here on the channel. I'll be posting the next one up sometime at the start of August, so from now until the end of July, feel free to consider joining. You'd also be helping me out a lot here in a massive way and get a special shout out like this in every single video. The link will be in the description below or you can just search it yourself at patreon.com slash izanami. But other than that guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, if you're interested in more Record of Ragnarok, then make sure you subscribe. I'll be doing more here on the channel like always. And yeah, have a great day.